Okay, um, Coach Lubick is here. Um, so we'll go to questions. Um, from WOWT, Rex Smith. Hey, Coach. Uh, after not really getting a spring last year in your first year, I'm curious coming into year number two, what are one or two things you'd like to accomplish with the offense during these spring practices? Sure. You know, just da daily improvement is the biggest thing. Um, uh, I think they're, you know, I didn't get a chance to go through a whole year with them and, and in off seasons, I think they've gotten a lot more familiar with me as opposed to last spring and, and me with them and, and not just the players, but with the coaches as well. And I think the more time you spend with each other and uh, learn uh, to communicate with each other, which is a big key to being successful in this business, the better things go. And you know, I'm grateful that I've got a full year underneath my belt now. Callahan, Husker Online. Hey, Coach, uh, you guys have added a lot of new blood to your room that you didn't have a year ago. I mean, just what have you seen early on, and, and what kind of boost can you get just from some of the things? And even having Omar Manning, it sounds like going all winter and, and getting a strong winter, and Oliver Martin obviously had a, a big winter. Uh, what kind of boost do you expect to kind of see from some, some of these guys? Sure. Well, you know, first off, we played a lot of young guys last year. It was their first year playing college football, so – we expect them to be a lot better. Um, part of being better is knowing your assignment, uh, which gives you confidence and allows you to play faster. And, and we've seen that happen. Um, and the other part is just a chance to get developed fit physically and, and work in the weight room with our, you know, we had a great strength staff, um, a great nutrition staff. And I think, you know, from a, a non-football standpoint, we train our guys as good as anybody in the country. And so guys are getting more confident in just their overall athletic abilities. Uh, really excited. You know, we have the one new receiver and, and a tight end that are here right now with um, Samari and with also Thomas, and they're, they're doing a great job. Uh, we start spring ball tomorrow, as you know. We, we've been allowed to do a little classroom work, and I can tell you they're very fast learners. Um, the fact that they're here early helps them a ton as far as being able to compete right off the bat, and we're excited about those additions. I had one personnel question. Will Chris Hickman play tight end or receiver for you guys this spring? He has the ability to play both. We've got him right now at receiver, uh, but we do some things. He, he knows the neat thing about our system is we cross-train our guys. So the tight end's no receiver, and the receivers know a lot of the tight end responsibilities, and he can do both, which is an offense that gives us a lot of flexibility. Lincoln General Star, Parker Gabriel. Yeah, Matt. Um, Scott Frost mentioned that you were starting off with with Samari in the slot. What do you like about his skill set um, in that position and, and, and playing inside? Yeah, um, well, he, he can do a lot of different things. He, he's very smart. You know, he's an experienced player. He's played four years of football. Comes from a great program. Very well coached. Um, learns fast. Uh, big body guy that has great catch radius. Uh, can go up and attack a ball in the air and. 50-50 balls aren't 50-50 with him. He goes up and gets them. Uh, and then he's a really good route runner. You know, he's very polished. Again, he comes from a good, really good program. He's been coached up really well. So uh, the, the thing about our slot, it can also he can also play outside and, and play inside. And and uh, to do that, you, you got to be able to mentally handle that. And that's sometimes hard for a, a first-year guy, but he's picked it up really well. Uh, so similarly, I guess, with, with Fedoni, I know – He's just getting started. Um, his first spring practice hasn't even happened yet. But do you envision him this year or in the long term as a guy that can that can play in more than one spot too, or do you put him, you know, at at tight end and just let him learn that first? Yeah, well, he, he can definitely play tight end, and he, he's another guy like Samari has a skill set that can do a lot of things. Which is a coach, the bet, the bigger the skill set, the more things you can do offensively. Uh, you know, last year if you watched our tight ends, they were all over the place. We sometimes we'd split them as the widest guys, and they play like wideouts. Um, but we'd also have them attached, and they'd be great point of attack guys. And we think Thomas is going to be right along the line with that, where you know he can stretch the field vertically, um, but also it shows very some physicality from the program he's coming from at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Sam McEwen, World Herald. Hey Matt, <clears throat> um, hi. I don't know. About 10, 15 years ago, it felt like bigger guys like tight ends were almost being faced out of college football. Um, but it feels like that they're back now. Like they're, they're, they're really in vogue. Maybe that's from the NFL. Maybe that's because kids are playing basketball or transferring back to playing football, but it feels like your team has a lot of just big receivers. 
not only a tight end, but a receiver too. Um, what, what are maybe some of the advantages of having players like that in, in, in your program? What, what, what do they give you on third down or red zone? And, and what, what maybe can you do uh, that you couldn't have done a couple of years ago when, you know, the, the top two receivers on the team were five, nine. Yeah. Oh, a couple of things, you know, and throwing the ball, they're, they're a quarterback's best friend because the big catch radius and it's, it's a lot easier to throw to a six, five guy than it is a five, nine guy. And uh, there's quarterback has, has room to miss and the guy can still go make a play. Um, you know, you hope to get some matchups where if, if a guy's good enough to play on the outside, but still be attached inside that what's the defense going to do? Are they going to take a corner and put him inside? Now he has to play the run. Um, or are they going to put a linebacker and he also needs to split him outside and, and play him man to man coverage? And if you have a guy that can, you know, be physical at the point of attack but still run routes on the outside, it, it just gives you a lot of options. Um, and yeah, and, and we're fortunate. We got, I think, a couple of those guys that can all make plays and are still tough. Uh, that's going to help us, you know, be a better offense this year. Is that, I mean, did you want that? Did you want a big sized? kind of group of receivers and I'm trying to imagine an Austin Allen, Samari Ture, Omar Manning across the line and how hard that might be to defend just physically. Is that something that you envisioned when you got to Nebraska and if you try to execute that? Yeah, I think in a perfect world, you always want the biggest, fastest, strongest um, athlete, but uh, you really try to get the best players and, and there's more that goes into it than just size, you know, is who can who can run the fastest, who can catch the ball well, who, who can learn the system the fastest. So it's a combination of things that just so worked out that, you know, we've been we able to add a lot of size to our, our skill spots. Um, and you would hope, you know, on the perimeter, blocking and, and doing things that we like to do as far as stretch the field horizontally as well, that they can be an asset as there. Because um, what's a defense going to do? Are they going to, you know, are they going to put corners out there? We should be able to block corners if we're 220 pounds and 6'6". Six, six. Or if we're going to put linebackers out there, then we hope, hopefully, could you know put those guys in binds with uh, with our passing schemes. Thanks. Mitch Sherman from the Athletic. Hey Matt, I was going to ask you about Pedoni and Hickman, but got beat to the punch on that. So uh, I'll, I'll shift to quarterbacks. What what do you want to see? What do you, from your perspective, what what do you need to see this spring? from that group, from, from Adrian and, and from the guys behind him? Well, you know, I, I think they're big picture, like every position, you want to see improvement. Um, quarter, quarterback specifically is protecting the ball. Um, and, and we can do th some things. Quarterback always gets sometimes too much credit and too much blame. And a lot of times the success of a quarterback depends on how developed and how well the guys around him play. Uh, and we got to get better play out of everyone around him, from the O-line to the receivers to, to the running backs. But if, from our quarterback, if we can be more consistent in making good decisions and not turning the ball over, that will solve a lot of problems. Anything in particular about Logan and Heinrich that are, are important for you and just getting them reps or, or, you know, Logan in particular because he's been in the program? Sure. You know, the reps are the biggest thing. These it's opportunities for both these guys, you know, because the numbers we have right now at quarterback is they're going to get a ton more reps. Um, and just to take take the next step, play with a little more confidence. And the way you do that is by getting reps. And the, the more reps you get, the more confident you are. And and I'm excited. Both those guys have had great winners, uh, worked, worked their tails off, tested really well. And we're, we're fired up to see what they can do starting tomorrow. 24-7 sports, Brian Christopherson. Hey Matt, Scott mentioned Oliver Martin tested really well with uh, with his winter work. Is, is have you kind of seen from him? I mean, he was a big time recruit coming out of high school. Have you seen sort of the traits that in him that kind of show that since he's been here? We have. You know, uh, we, we were first of all we were very fortunate to get Oliver. Um, he didn't really get fall camp last year because we didn't know if he was going to be eligible. I think he got declared eligible it was like midway through the season, and then. We, we threw him in the line of fire, and he did, he did a good job. And he ended up starting the last couple of games for us. But it was hard for him because he never really understood the base of the offense and the language. And it, just, it wasn't his fault. It was just a situation he was in. Um, now, he, he's always had great athletic ability. We knew that. I actually recruited him out of high school when I was at Oregon. Uh, but now he, he's taking it a step further because he understands the offense. 
Uh, he, he knows what routes to run. He knows who to block. So it, he had all these great skills, but when he was thinking, he was like playing a little bit slow. It does that to everybody. But now that he's playing with some confidence, knows what he's doing, you can actually see his athletic ability come through, and it's, it's been impressive. What, what's the next step for a guy like Xavier Betts, too, who you were really starting to give more reps to as the season went along last year? What, what, where can he go now, and now that he has a full spring to work with? Yeah, kind of like all our young guys, but, but him specifically is just understanding of the offense, uh, what, what, where he needs to be and when so he can play faster. That's what limited a little of those guys last year was they didn't understand the whole offense, so we could use some bits and pieces here. Well, now, just like Oliver, he, he was a true freshman last year, so he's, he's got a way better understanding, uh, did a good job in the weight room and, and worked really hard. So with reps, he's going to get a ton better, and uh, he's going to get a lot more reps. Thank you. Thank you. Take two more for Coach Lubick. Uh, Steve Simple, General Star. How much um, – I don't know if you guys have talked about this – how much do you go live? How much will you go live against, like, one-on-one, -on -one, the ones versus ones, offense versus defense? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. We actually talk about it every day because um, we want our guys – we we want our guys to go full speed in practice, but we also want to stay healthy. And so to do that, you really got to be strategic on how you plan practice. Uh and, and, and specific drills, like you alluded to, one-on-ones is always full speed, but we're not going to try to, you know, take someone to the ground, but it's, it's full speed to the ball. Um, we'll have certain practices where we go live and actually scrimmage and tackle to the ground, but, but not a ton. Uh, our, our guys have been pretty well trained how to practice full speed, which we consider live, but, but keep, stay on your feet, because injuries happen when guys go to the ground. So those are the majority of our practices, uh, whether it's padded or non-padded. But there will be times um, during certain scrimmage situations or certain periods where we're going to say, hey, we want this to be game-like. And game-like means we got, we got to be able to tackle, we got to be able to break tackles, we got to be able to block. Uh, but we try to be very strategic because the last thing we want to do in spring is, is get someone hurt. But at the same time, we, we need to practice at a full-speed tempo. Thank you, Coach. And last one for Coach Lubick, uh, Derek Peterson, Hale Varsity. Hey, Matt. Um, Throughout his time here, Coach Frost has really stressed the importance of culture. You, your guy's been around a lot of football teams. As you look at the team that you have right now after the, the winter and everything that guys went through, how would you assess the culture of this football team? Uh, you know, I've been here for one year, and it's improved a lot since I've been here. And to me, when you know you have a good culture, when it's a, a player-led culture, and, and your players – are actually the guys that are setting examples of your culture. You know, culture is shared beliefs that everyone has, but then actions that match it. And, you know, you can say this, or you can have a slogan, but it doesn't do much good unless guys are actually doing it. Um, a big part of culture to me is showing up on time, uh, working hard, and, and competing every day to get better. And, I, and I've seen that. And we've obviously been stressing that, but it's a whole different level when your leaders, Adrian Martinez, Austin Allen, uh, when those guys start doing that, and which they have been doing, it becomes contagious. And so that, that's the biggest thing. I, I think our leaders uh, have, have took it up another notch, and the rest of our team is, is following with them. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Coach. Uh, we'll have Coach Shenander here in just a minute. 